What is happening guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing an updated beginners tutorial around fittings for PC water cooling. I did a bit of a guide about a year and a half ago, but I feel like such a lot has changed since then. New fittings have come out, different styles of fittings. So I wanna do a bit of an updated guide for you guys. And for anyone new here who is watching the video, this should certainly help you guys out, especially if you are beginners in water cooling. I'll go through all of the different fittings that there are on the market and hopefully give you guys a bit of an idea about what each fitting does and what its job is within a custom water-cooled PC. If you do enjoy videos like this, consider hitting that subscribe button, leaving a like on the video and definitely comment down below and let me know if there are any other water cooling guides that you guys would like to see. So let's get stuck into the video. So to start things off, I wanna bring us back to the basics. Water cooling all began with soft tubing. Soft tubing is a very inexpensive way to actually create a custom loop within the system. Now there are two ways of tackling a soft tube system. One could be to use these soft tube compression fittings. Number two could be to use barbed fittings. So what we have here is the barbed fitting. Now how this barbed fitting works is, basically you grab your soft tubing, you grab the barbed fitting, and then you want to try and put the barb fitting in the soft tubing. And basically, once you have that in there, the compression between the barb and the tubing itself is what creates that watertight seal. Now doing things this way is very inexpensive. The reason for this is because you no longer have to grab more fittings for say 90 degree bends and things like that, which you would have to do in a hard tube system. The beauty about soft tube is it's very flexible, Therefore, you can put it wherever you like around the system. You only need a few fittings to go in the available ports. You don't have to worry about bends or anything like that. Makes it very, very inexpensive. As some of you guys may know, fittings do cost a lot as well. So soft tubing, certainly the route to go for beginners, but we do have another option over the barb fittings. Now, what a couple of people like to do here as well is put a bit of a zip tie on the end just to you know, add a bit more safety to keep that soft tube on the barb itself. Now, let's go to the upgrade of the barb fitting for soft tubing and we'll bring out the compression. So here we have a compression fitting, essentially the exact same thing. However, we have a compression ring to hold the barb fitting in the actual tube. So we have the barb section right here, then we insert it into the tube like so. So that's what your usual barb fitting would look like. But now we have a compression ring. So what we wanna do is we wanna put the compression ring on first. So you put it on this way, you make sure the threaded end is facing the end of the tube so that when you put the barb end on, it goes on like so. And basically all we have right now is a compression between the tube itself and the barb, which is keeping it watertight. But now once we pull the compression end up, we can simply turn that and make it tight so that once it's tight, it is squeezing down on the tube to really seal that compression off. Now moving on to our hard tubing, to start things off, we'll bring things back to the basics again. The first initial hard tube fittings used to be something like these. They contain two O-rings on the inside and they're called push fittings. Now, basically what happens with these is the push fittings require a tube to basically just be pushed inside them. Now this was great, but if a tube did end up becoming loose, then the game was over. And also when you were inserting tubes, those O-rings on the inside, they can actually become cut. So if we have a tube, for instance, say like this, you can see that it is very sharp around the edges. And when pushing that down into this push fitting here, it can actually cut the two O-rings which are on the inside. So now what we do these days is we grab a bit of sandpaper or something called a deburring tool and we actually smoothen out the edges like you guys can see here, which makes it easier for us to push this into the fitting and that creates a nice watertight seal between the O-ring and the tube itself. Now these days we have updated versions of these. We have ones that Essentially, you push it in, but it also has a compression. These are called compression fittings. Now, the idea is to buy compression fittings 
that are the exact same size as the outer diameter of your tube. So here we have a 12 millimeter outer diameter tube. We wanna buy compression fittings that accommodate 12 millimeter outer diameter tubes. Now, most common sizes are 16 mil, 14 mil, 30 mil, and 12 mil. So definitely make sure you get the right size. You don't want one that is too large by accident or too small, otherwise you could accidentally have the tube come out with ease. You gotta remember water cooling builds up pressure in the system and these pressures can obviously make leaking an issue. So let's demonstrate one of these compression fittings. Here we have a whole bunch of compression fittings right here, all built for a 12 millimeter tube. So if we grab one right here, we undo the compression ring, you guys can see that we are left with the compression ring right here, we have an O-ring, and of course we do have the actual fitting itself. Inside the fitting you can see that we do have an O-ring right there, so it's still like that push fitting that we were talking about, however, now we have two other variants which are helping us to keep that nice watertight seal. So what we're going to do is we're going to firstly put the compression ring on the tube like so, then we wanna put the O-ring on so that we can compress the O-ring between the compression ring and the tube to create that watertight seal. Now that we've got those on, we can grab our fitting and we can push the tube in like so. Now once the tube is in, then we can start doing it up and that will create that watertight seal. So now that that is done up all the way, you can see that we have a nice watertight seal and we have two O-rings protecting that from leaking. Now, all of these fittings right here, they all do the same thing, just different colors and different shapes and sizes. And these are the most common ones that you will see in a water-cooled PC. Now, there is a very new fitting which I wanted to show you guys. Thermaltake have made these. It actually makes it better for the system, reduces leaks once again because you are able to make the tube the perfect size so that it goes all the way into the fitting. So what we have here is a multi-layer design. This has four O-rings in total. The other ones only had three or two, uh, depending on which company you buy from. And this one has four, but it's got a different way of approaching the watertight seal. So let's take a closer look at the seal itself. So firstly, we have the normal compression ring, which you see right here but we have a part that comes on the inside. So here's the compression ring, here's the actual fitting part itself that screws into the water block, and then right here we have this ring here, it contains two O-rings on the inside, and of course we do have the separate O-ring, which is the one that you guys saw me put over the tube. So how does this all work? Let me show you guys how this one works. So starting things off, the good thing about this is you can put the tube right on the fitting itself. That means that the tube is going to be all the way in the fitting and there's not gonna be any gaps, it's not gonna come loose. Now, so how do we do this? So we wanna take the compression ring and we wanna put that over the tube first. Secondly, we wanna grab the O-ring and we wanna put that over the top of the tube like you guys can see there. That is going to create the watertight seal between this compression and the O-ring itself on the tube. Next, we wanna grab this part right here and we wanna push our tube down like so. And basically that makes it flush with the end there. And then of course we have this part right here. So we wanna rest our tube on here like so. And then we wanna to begin to do this up. Now that's create the perfect amount of tube inside of this fitting. And of course we have four O-rings preventing any leaking. I think it's a pretty cool design and concept, certainly something that's new on the market that I needed to show you guys. Certainly something to look out for, and I'm sure we're going to see even better inventions coming out in the near future. So going into the hard tube space in water cooling is where it starts to become quite expensive. You can bend all of the tubes by yourself, therefore reducing the amount of fittings that you need to buy. However, if you are not confident in bending the tubes yourself, there are other options, but it does add extra cost. Here we have 90 degree fittings. Now these fittings are the exact same as the uh, compression fittings you guys can see on the end here, we do have a compression fitting. However, instead of you having to bend the tube yourself, 
it does the 90 degree bend for you. You can see that we do have the threading on the end there, so that would just screw into your water block like so, and then you'd have your 90 degree tube coming out and going to the next fitting. Now, for those of you who do not know how to bend tubes, or you feel uncomfortable bending tubes, we also have these 90 degree fittings here. Now, these ones here, they join two tubes together. So if there's a place that you want a 90 degree bend that's not at a water block, say you've got a, a tube heading along, coming straight in, and then you want another tube coming out, these are the perfect fittings for you. These are the 90 degree fittings, and of course they have a compression fitting on each side, both with an O-ring and an O-ring on the inside as well. So they work exactly the same as the compression fittings that I showed you at the start. These are pretty handy, but of course adding more cost to the system. For those of you who do want to approach it at a different angle and go for a bit of a 45 degrees, you can also get 60 degree fittings just like this one. You can purchase these. Now, this will basically require you to put your compression fitting on the end like so, and of course it comes up at a 40 to five degree angle. So there's different fittings to achieve different angles and different results, depending on the look that you are going for in your system. Now extension fittings are, I think a pretty important one to discuss. Now the reason for this is if you have a more compact case, I think this is where these ones will come in more handy. So these extension fittings can be used say on a radiator if there is a really tight squeeze up the top you put one of these there, so that will bring the tube down even further, so you're able to screw in your fitting on the end like so. If you didn't have these, it might be a bit of an issue to actually reach that fitting up the top of the radiator. So these are just a, a real handy thing to have. I'd certainly recommend purchasing a few spares, maybe three or four, uh, because you know you could certainly run into some issues if you didn't have any of these. Now this is probably one of the more important fittings. You only need one, maybe two in your system. I usually use one depending on how many loops that I have. This is our valve fitting. Now people need valve fittings in a system. It makes it so much easier to drain the system and it's so much better for maintenance as well. Valve fittings work by basically closing up the port on the inside by turning the valve so that no liquid can get out. Now the best place to put one of these would be at the lowest part of your system containing a large volume of liquid. That would be the reservoir. And to put it down in the reservoir, sometimes the reservoir doesn't have the extra ports down the bottom. So what you guys would want is something like a T-joint. Now these T-joints are really good. Basically, you have one port here, you have one port on this side, one port on this side, and that allows you to join one of them to the reservoir, then you'd have your tube coming out of one side, and then you'd join one of these onto the other side. Now that is only if you don't have any free ports down below on the reservoir itself. So once you have this closed, all you'd do is you'd put a stop fitting on the end, that's just a little extra precaution to make sure that you haven't accidentally opened it or anything like that. And to drain your system, all you would do is you would open this port right here. Like so, you can see that the inside is still closed. And then what I normally do is I would put a soft tube on the end of this so that I could drain the liquid into a bucket or a plate or just something that can catch the water. So I grab my tube like so, I insert that onto here. Once that's done, you can open up the valve. Once the valve is open, you'll notice that liquid will start to flow down and out the tube. But the problem is it's going very slow. Now the reason for it going very slow is the liquid needs something to replace it with as it's trying to escape. Now what we need to do is to let air inside the system. So what you would do is, if you have a reservoir with a free port up the top, you need to take this port off you'll notice that once you start to loosen it and air gets inside of the top of the reservoir, this water will start flowing out very fast. This is certainly a handy fitting to have in your system. I certainly recommend getting one of these. Last but not least, I'd love to talk about bulkhead fittings now. Beginners probably wouldn't use these, but I feel like these are a very popular one to talk about, especially when we get so many comments in the comments section on our videos about these fittings. So. 
let's bring these over and take a closer look at them. So bulkhead fittings, their main purpose is to allow for liquid to flow from one side of the panel to the other. So what these do here is basically you undo this ring right here and in your computer case or if you have a custom panel that you've made, you drill a hole so that this could fit right in and come out the other side of the panel. And then of course you do this ring back up. Now once this ring is back up, the panel is in between this ring and the fitting itself. So it's holding it in place. You have a hole here so you can put different fittings in there like a compression fitting and therefore you're able to run your tube through here. The water is able to pass through to the other side and out through the other fitting which you would have your tubes joined onto. That's how we're able to achieve nice clean looks with different builds that you guys see me do on a regular basis. Now, of course, there are many other different fittings out there. These are just the basics that I think majority of people actually use out there. I hope that I gave you a bit of an understanding to what each fitting does and, of course, the new stuff that is on the market. You can check out our old guide as well. A lot of these fittings were in there, but we do have some updated fittings here. So I felt like I had to make this video as a bit of an update for you guys. If this was helpful or if there is any other water cooling guides that you would like to know, leave a comment down below. Give a like on the video if you did enjoy and consider subscribing because we have many other tutorials on the channel just like this one. And of course, we have lots of custom PCs like the ones you saw in this video. We now have a Patreon as well. If any of you guys do want to support us, feel free to head over to the link in the description. We currently have two Patreons, so thank you very much for the support, guys. It is greatly appreciated. It helps us to be able to afford to build new PCs every week for you all. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Voices in